This lecture is brought to you by Megger, a leading me Amps, volts, ohms, AVO. The Mega AVO digital multimeter is the one tool that does it all. The Mega AVO 835 digital multimeter, as the name implies, features multiple test and measurement functions integrated into a single portable package, including, but not limited to, AC and DC voltage and current measurements, resistance, temperature, phase sequence detection, and more. Today, we'll take a brief look at the capacitance and temperature measurement functions. Additionally, we'll examine the diode test function. We'll explore other functions and features of this digital multimeter in later lectures. Let's first take a look at the capacitance measurement feature. This is pretty handy because interpreting a specific manufacturer's capacitance code is a little tricky, principally because there is simply no universal means of doing so. You'd think capacitor manufacturers would adopt a standard code to systematically identify capacitance values similar to the resistor color code, but they haven't. Unless a capacitor is physically large enough to have its nominal capacitance value written legibly on its side, it is the wild, wild west, and absolutely anything and everything goes, including colors, numbers, letters, and combinations of colors, numbers, and letters. Where letters mean numbers, the numbers 8 and 9 actually have less value than the numbers 0 through 6, and colors appear in 3-dot patterns, 6-dot patterns, and stripes. I am not joking about this. It is perhaps for this reason I tell my students to initially forget about it. After some time and repeat exposure, sure enough, they figure it out but it's often an exercise in frustration to insist they do so up front. Oftentimes, the most efficient and effective course of action is to simply measure the capacitance of the capacitor in question using a DMM with a capacitance measurement function like in the Mega AVO 835. Consider the small capacitor with the code 104 written on the side. Given the small physical size of this particular capacitor, most likely this manufacturer is using a three-digit code where the first two digits are the first two digits of the capacitance value and the third digit is the number of zeros when capacitance is expressed in units of picofarads. One zero four means one zero followed by four zeros, or one hundred thousand picofarads, or more appropriately, one hundred nanofarads, which drops us right into the middle of the inhospitable no man's land that a majority of capacitor manufacturers fear to tread. For some inexplicable reason, most capacitor manufacturers refuse to specify nominal capacitance in units of nanofarads rather restrict themselves to solely microfarads and picofarads. Don't ask me why they do this, but they do. A 100 nanofarad capacitor would most likely be specified as having a nominal capacitance of 0.1 microfarads. Let's use the Mega AVO 835 to verify this manufacturer's shoddy identification scheme. To place the AVO 835 into capacitance measurement mode, rotate the function dial to the selection with the capacitor schematic symbol, illustrating the parallel plates of a capacitor. In this position, the AVO835 allows access to the black common terminal and the red live terminal on the left. Black lead into the black hole. Red lead into the red hole. Similar to an ohmmeter, the capacitance measurement function measures the capacitance of an element in units of farads placed between the two tips of the leads. The element under test must be depowered and isolated from the system. When placed between the probes, the nominal 0.1 microfarad capacitor appears to have a capacitance of 0 0.094 microfarads, or more appropriately 94 nanofarads. This is extremely close to the anticipated value of 100 nanofarads. Electrolytic capacitors, identifiable by their characteristic cylindrical shape, are polarized, meaning one lead is specified positive and the other negative and will not function as intended and may catastrophically rupture if hooked up backwards. Given the severity of these consequences, You'd think any sane and reasonable group of manufacturers would adopt a universal scheme in identifying these leads, but you'd be wrong. Capacitor manufacturers use all sorts of odd schemes to designate which lead is which. This particular manufacturer designates the positive terminal with a longer lead, and if this escapes your attention, additionally designates the negative terminal with a gray stripe down the side. It's important to respect the polarity of electrolytic capacitors when measuring capacitance by connecting the red live lead to the positive terminal 
in the black common lead to the negative terminal. When measured by the AVO835, this nominal 100 microfarad capacitor actually appears to have a value of roughly 94.6 microfarads. While we're here, let me remind you that capacitors are energy storage devices and can remain charged even after a circuit is depowered. For this reason, capacitors must be safely discharged prior to measurement to prevent damage to the measurement instrument or personnel. In the event the Mega AVO835 detects voltage in a capacitor, it will attempt to safely discharge it. For example, I've charged this capacitor up to 5 volts and then I've disconnected it from the circuit. That amount of charge accumulated in capacitor plates is sitting there like a snake coiled and waiting to strike any fool that touches it. When I attempt to measure capacitance, the AVO835 emits an audible pulse beep and flashes voltage over limit on the display. This warning prevents an operator from damaging the instrument, the circuit, or themselves in the case of an errant energized circuit. After a time, the capacitor is safely discharged and the capacitance can be measured properly. It is a recommended practice not to rely on this safety feature and probably discharge the capacitor prior to measurement. However, in the event you forget, this feature might save you from getting bit by a snake. Let's now examine the diode test function. Diodes are essentially electrical check valves that allow current conduction in one direction and block it in another. Schematically, an arrow indicates the permitted direction of conventional current flow, whereas the disallowed direction of conventional current flow is identified by a wall blocking flow. When allowing current flow, a diode is said to be forward biased. When disallowing current flow, a diode is said to be reverse biased. When forward biased, positive to negative, left to right, conventional current will flow. However, when reverse biased, positive to negative, right to left, conventional current will not flow. Physically, the block direction of conventional current flow is often represented having a band scribed on that terminal. Light emitting diode manufacturers additionally use a flat on the light body and also designate the positive lead in forward bias mode as being longer than the negative lead. Lacking physical identifiers like these, it's hard to tell the orientation of a diode at glance and whether this device is functional. For this reason, Mega AVO835 offers a diode test mode. Key to its functionality is the physical properties of diodes in forward bias mode. When forward biased, a diode exhibits a small but constant voltage drop anywhere from 0.6 volts to 2.2 volts depending upon construction. To place the AVO835 in diode test mode, rotate the function dial to the capacitor measurement function and press the yellow mode key. When the live red lead is placed on the longer positive terminal and the black common lead placed on the shorter negative terminal, this LED illuminates and the AVO835 indicates it necessitates roughly 1.8 volts to do so. This diode is functional and is forward biased. If, however, we place the live red lead on the shorter negative terminal and the black common lead on the longer positive terminal, the LED does not illuminate and the AVO835 indicates voltage over limit. This LED is reverse biased and does not permit current flow as presently oriented. Diodes die one of two deaths, opens or shorts. A shorted diode would exhibit no voltage differential when forward biased and most significantly would not prevent current flow when reverse biased and similarly exhibit no voltage differential. An open diode in contrast would not allow current flow in either direction. Here's an example of an opened LED. The Mega AVO835 indicates voltage over limit while in the forward bias orientation, indicating this open and unilluminated LED will not permit current flow in either direction. Let's now take a quick look at the temperature measurement function. When measuring certain electrical properties, it's often necessary to know the temperature at which the electrical property was measured, the classic example being insulation resistance. The resistance of a motor windings insulation is a temperature dependent property and if the temperature is known at the time of measurement, a correction can be made to identify long-term trends of this property. Lacking knowledge of temperature, problems or maintenance issues can be overlooked. We'll explore this relationship in greater detail in later lectures. For now, let it be said that certain electrical properties are temperature dependent and temperature must be measured and recorded. Rather than carrying a thermometer around with you all day, the AVO835 can do so with a supplementary temperature measurement probe included in the package. To place the AVO835 into temperature measurement mode, rotate the function dial to the degrees Celsius selection. Insert the temperature measurement probe into the live and common terminals, respecting the polarity of the probe, and position the tip of the probe near the location of interest. After a brief moment, temperature stabilizes and is displayed upon the primary screen. Looks like this lab is a balmy 21.2 degrees Celsius, equivalent to roughly 70 degrees Fahrenheit. If I go outside on a wet day, looks like the temperature has dropped to roughly 9.4 degrees Celsius. Electrical equipment, 
operated at the upper and lower extremes of their permissible ranges might exhibit noticeably different properties with knowledge of the temperature at the time of measurement, one can account for these temperature-induced effects. If you're one of those savage lands that actually uses Fahrenheit, one can simply press the yellow mode button once to toggle the display to degrees Fahrenheit. Now I know what you're thinking. It's always a recommended practice to resist the temptation to insert the temperature probe into any part of your or your lab partner's body. All right, that's about it for this brief introduction to the capacitance measurement, diode test, and temperature measurement functions on the MEGA AVO835 DMM. We'll examine other functions and features of this DMM in later lectures. Thank you very much for your attention and interest. We'll see you again during the next lecture of our series. Remember to tell your lazy lab partner about this resource. Be sure to check out the Big Bad Tech channel for additional resources and updates. Thank you.